for that wonderful talk. Uh, next, we'll be having another Nameless Pathology Fellow, uh, Jack, who talked to us about an accommodating intraocular lens, um, which they're currently testing in the lab at home. So please help me welcome Jack. <laughs> All right. Good morning. My name is Jack Lee, and uh, I'm a pathology and research fellow at working with Dr. Mamlis and Dr. Warner. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit about a new accommodating intraocular lens that we've been um, studying. Uh, this, is, this lens is developed by CORD LLC, and it is called the SC9 lens. Our uh, research is uh, supported by the Research to Prevent Blindness and from a grant by CORD. And the authors here have no uh, financial interest in this product. So first, for a little bit of background, um, the first intraocular lens was implanted by um, Harold Ridley in 1949. He had experience with British Flyers uh, pilots who had sustained injuries uh, when fragments of the cockpit became embedded in their eyes. Uh, when he noticed that this the material, PMMA, did not cause inflammatory reaction, he concluded that this uh, material is inert, um, and he was actually, legend goes that he was inspired to create the first intraocular lens um, when a med student actually asked him that uh, why he didn't uh, replace uh, the lens after a cataract surgery. Um, <coughs> since that time, uh, cataract surgery has become um, routine. About 4,000 to 6,000 per million operations are done each year, um, and advancements in material in lens material design and implementation implementation technique um, has made implantation technique has made this um, has allowed this to give restore safe and effective distant vision. But there is a problem um, after removal of the native lens and and replacement with an artificial lens. The patient develops presbyopia, post cataract presbyopia. And to tackle this problem of presbyopia after cataract surgery, we turn to development of intraocular lens lenses. There's two general strategies towards this. The first strategy is multifocal lenses, uh, but with this strategy, there's a high risk of the patients developing glare, halos, and loss of contrast sensitivity. The second strategy is accommodating intraocular lenses, or AIOLs. AIOLs can change their position or shape to produce change in refractory power. Uh, there are two within this category. There's a single optic and a, and a dual optic. Single optic AIOLs uh, rely on anterior movement of the lens optic with ciliary muscle contraction to generate increase in refractory power. Alternatively, the dual optic AIOL uh, has two optics that move in relation to each other to change its refractory power. And here's two examples of the uh, accommodating IOLs that I spoke of. The one on the left is the crystal lens. And today I want to present a novel single optic AIOL designed by CORD called the SC9. This new lens is developed by Stuart Cumming, uh, creator of the crystal lens. It relies on the optic shift uh, principle. The anterior movement of the lens optic with ciliary muscle contraction uh, leads to an increase in refractory power. This lens is a single optic lens, um, and it, it is meant as a requirement of the crystal lens. St the study objective, in our lab, we're charged with assessing the safety and the stability of the lens in a, guessed it, bunny model. Um, we do not test the function of these new lenses, only the safety and stability. But we believe that, be well, but before uh, clinical studies could be done to assess accommodation, uh, safety and stability must first be established. Uh, the study is ongoing, so today I'll present what we know uh, at two months into the study. So the, the test article went into the right eye of the bunnies. Specifically, this is a posterior chamber lens, two plate haptics, and it's made with silicone and polyamide. The change in design of the haptic is meant to improve stability uh, within the capsular bag. The control lens is a silicone plate lens that is commercially available made by Star Surgical. We implanted the test and control lens into nine bunnies, and the bunnies will be followed for six months and evaluated by slit lamp examination. 
uh, rabbits were sacrificed at two months for histopathological examination. This is a six-month study uh, based upon the guidelines of the International Organization for Standardization. The surgery, uh, including fecal, emulsification, and IL implantation was performed by Dr. Mamelis. Uh, we conducted slit lamp examinations periodically. Uh, two rabbits were sacrificed at month two, and the rest will be at month six. And uh, we used the Miyake apple view after enucleation to assess the globes and select lenses. Um, we perform implant cytology on select lenses. And I also have a video of the surgery. Uh, this is an insertion of the lens. Um, this is insertion of the test lens and the control lens was inserted in a similar way. Uh, this was done through a three millimeter incision and of course the video is not sped up at all. And so uh, we conducted slit lamp examination um, to evaluate for capsular biocompatibility. And we did so at week one, four, and two months so far. Um, the lenses were scored with a standardized scoring method. Anterior capsular pacification and posterior capsular pacification were scored uh, with, on, with slit lamp and uh, scored on a scale of zero to four. At week one, the test and control lenses were similar. Both had demonstrated um, mild inflammatory reactions, aqueous cell formation, and fibrin formation. By week four, we started to notice uh, a greater difference. The degree of capsular bag opacification was significantly higher in the control lens, even by week four. By two months, we observed increased proliferative material within the capsular bag in all eyes. But um, we did observe, observe a significant posterior capsular pacification formation uh, that was much higher in the control eyes. And posterior synechia formation in the test group was less than that of the control group. We scored the level of uh, PCO clinically at two months and used T-test to compare the scoring uh, for the test and control group. And there was a significant difference between the two lenses with a greater degree of capsular bag pacification in uh, the control eyes. Next, after two months of following up, we sacrificed two bunnies and conducted post-mortem examination. Uh, the Miyake Apple view allows us to evaluate the eyes from a posterior view uh, with the uh, lenses positioned within the capsule. Um, Likewise, in the postmortem examination for the central and peripheral PCO and submarine formation, uh, there was a significant difference between the two lenses with a greater degree of capsular bag pacification within the control. Um, in the next step, we removed the test and control lens from the eyes. All globes were sectioned and histopathological examination was uh, done. Neither the test nor control lens show signs of inflammation or toxicity. We evaluate the cytology of select lenses for both the test and control implants following enucleation and removal of the lenses at two months. We were looking for surface reactions uh, such as um, cellular reactions like giant cells, macrophages, cellular debris, and fibrinous deposits. Uh, and this is important because this demonstrates uveal biocompatibility. A significant amount of proliferation of material was noted on both uh, control and test lenses. Both show uh, similar surface cellular, rea cellular reaction um, and thus similar uveal biocompatibility. So in summary, the uveal biocompatibility appeared to be similar for both the control and test lenses up to two months postoperatively. And for the test lenses, there appeared to be less posterior 
uh, cement gear formation at three months examination. In terms of capsular biocompatibility, for the test lenses, there, there appeared to be less capsular bag opacification at two months examination. Okay. We, we are going to finish the um, study in about four months, and at this point, uh, it appears that the test lens, um, the Accord SC9, accommodating intraocular lens, retain biocompatibility compared to that of the control lens. And we're looking forward to uh, the result of clinical studies in during which uh, accommodation will be um, uh, assessed. Yep. Alrighty. Thank you. 